Hello, I'm Mix Mars and Mar Man, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be trying to get going this um, Briggs and Strand. This is a garden care um, lawnmower, um, which has been left outside all winter. So if your lawnmower has been left outside in the rain, and we've had some rain this winter, um, in the freezing cold, it's soaking wet, as I say, absolutely dripping wet, covered in muck, and no matter what I do, I pull and pull and pull on this machine, and it will not start. So if you're in the same situation as me, I'm gonna give you a quick little um, tips and tricks on how to start, especially these Briggs and Stratton classic engines, how to get them started, how to get them running again, and then next year, maybe, you won't leave your machine out in the freezing cold, soaking wet, so you're in the same situation as me. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mars and Mar Man, hit the subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload my video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's get this lawnmower back up and running, as it used to. Okay, so let's just say your lawnmower has been left outside all winter. It's soaking wet and what have you. First thing we do is get yourself a, a cotton rag and take off any excess water that is on your, on your machine, okay? This is absolutely covered in leaf litter. It's been out all winter, all autumn, and we're now the 1st of January, New Year's Day. Nothing happening indoors, so I thought, come down the shed and get a bit done. Start as you mean to go on. Have a good clean up, get your machine looking nice and, nice and sensible again, okay? That way you know what you're working with. You don't be working in dirt, okay? So, lawnmower now been given the wipe off. On these classics, you'll find over here, there's a little tiny um, uh, nut and bolt here on, on top of the air filter, okay? Just undo that. It's a big, long, about three inch, four inch bolt, okay? Take that out. And then just remove your air filter off the top, and this, this air filter here is absolutely covered. Now, you can either replace the air filters, okay? Which I recommend. Or if you don't have one to spare, just soak that in petrol, okay? Give it a good clean, clean all the bits off the top here, let it dry back out, put it back on, and you'll be good to go, okay? But that's just a temporary measure. But you can just buy the air filters um, online, no problem at all. On this machine, this has got a, uh, a rev on here, a, a throttle as well, but what I wanna do is take the fuel tank and carburetor off of this machine, okay? Because it, it, it's just refusing to start. And the reason is, is because it's been left outside and there'd be, there'd be water inside the tank. So on this one here, you're gonna wanna have a half inch um, socket and a three eighths, okay? Now you're gonna need some minor tools and all those minor tools that, that you're gonna need, you can buy from any decent reputable um, um, DIY center, okay? You can use sockets. <laughs> or impacts. I've got an impact, I'm just lucky that way, but you can just buy some little cheap socket set down, down pan land for like, I don't know, three, four ninety nine. dollars they're, they're not a lot of money. And I want a half inch, which is that one. So three eighths on the front, and a half inch just down here on the side. I'm gonna remove that. Now your lawnmower may not have uh, a throttle control. If it does have a throttle control, it's the same as mine. If it doesn't, it's exactly the same. Yours just doesn't have one but it doesn't need one either. So I have just moved the camera for your own viewing pleasure. I'll try and get you in nice and close up where I can, okay? So your half inch bolt that I've just removed, okay? Let me take my camera off the old stand. Your half inch bolt is this one here. Now that may also be a three eighths. It depends on how old your machine is, okay? But your half inch bolt will just sit in there like so, okay? Um, and then your three eight bolt comes out the front out of this one just here, okay? Yours might be slightly different, as I say, just based upon the age. Um, but if it, is a, if it is a classic, then, um, they're, they're, not, they're not all that different, okay? I've got an eight mil or flathead here to remove my throttle control. As I say, yours may not have the throttle control on it, okay, but my one does. Now, technically, these, they shouldn't have a throttle on them, okay? And I prefer to run these without it. Um, if you can remove them, I would recommend removing them. That's just me. Um, because I think, they, because they're self-governed, about 3,200 RPM, uh, they just don't need them. It's as simple as that. But uh, I'm gonna leave mine on for now. Uh, it's a feature, that's all it is. Someone put a feature on it and they just, all we've done is they just wrapped a cable tie around the carburetor from standard uh, to make that work, okay? So I'm just gonna remove my throttle control now. That's out of the way. With that now done, what you can now do is you can now remove and retract this whole um, carburetor, put it towards you but just be mindful there are one or two little tiny governor springs in place. So now's a good time to take any photographs you may need because you will need to disconnect these little tiny springs and governor. So the spring, literally just get hold of the spring, tip it backwards on itself and that just comes off just like so. And then the governor arm, it's a bit of a rotation going on, rotate it forward and then it slip out like that, okay? Let me just show you the actual rotation of that governor arm. 
for you, just so you can actually see it. There's a government arm just there, okay? And as I say, it's a rotation going forwards and there's a little tiny spring that came off and that purely just sits on, on top of this carb. It's a little tiny hole just there, the big one for the governor and the small one for the spring, very simple. As you can see, this tank setup is absolutely horrendous, uh, but we're gonna get involved in that in a minute, right? We're gonna look into that. Now, as I say, this can be done at home. Now, if you're not, if you're not um, mechanically minded and lots of people are not, okay, that's absolutely fine. Take it to a lawnmower shop, they'd be happy to, happy to um, have your custom. Take it to them and they'll get you going up and running. In next to no time at all, it all depends on their league time and their wait time. And this time of year, as we're coming into the season, they're gonna be busy. They're gonna be busy, busy boys and girls, okay? So just make sure that uh, you get it in nice and early to avoid disappointment. Right, so next we're gonna be working actually on this carburetor itself. Now the first thing to do, I would say, is just, just clean this off. Get, get it all cleaned off by hand. Get rid of all this gunk. If you've got an air compressor, perfect. If you haven't, use your hands. Get all this stuff that's all got to come away before you even start working on this carburetor, otherwise you're just defeating the object. So let me get this nice and cleaned up. I mean, two seconds, I've got a nice big air compressor here. I can just whiz it off really, really quickly and I'll get it clean, I'll come back to you once I've done so. Right, quick little air, air blow off my air compressor makes short work of all that for me, but uh, it may not be as quite as quick for you if you don't have the air compressor. I've now got a container, and all I want to do is just remove um, some of this, um, or all of this fuel, out of um, this tank. Now, a friend of mine, Dougie, over at Dizzy Lizzy's, he's got a channel, check out Doug at Dizzy Lizzy's, he give me one of these, I can't use these now. Microwavable dishes, you know, one for your sausage, one for your mash, brilliant for, for work on lawnmowers. So tip all that out now, tip all that out. Now bear in mind what I said here, this has been out in the elements, so I'm gonna all the fuel out, all of it. And this is the main reason, one of the main reasons, why your lawnmower won't start, okay? So I've just been very careful, just make sure I get all this water out, get a bit of a prime as well, so I'll get all that stuff out from inside there. Lovely, right. So now, with most of the fuel out, a bit more there. I'm gonna put a rag up inside here to um, soak up all the other fuel that's in there, but have a look in here. In here, guys, you can see bubbles. See there's bubbles inside the fuel? Well, those bubbles are actually, that's actually water. So there's actually water inside this fuel. Can you see that? Let me just get a little pointer for you, a little screwdriver. Right down here, it sits underneath the fuel. There, there's the water sat underneath there. And that is because, on these classics, although it's a fantastic little lawnmower, on these classics, they have two major flaws. One is where the big bolt goes in for your air filter, water can get in through that little tiny hole just there underneath the screw. That's one problem. And the second problem is on the fuel cap, if I can find the fuel cap, has got little tiny air breather holes. And sometimes the little tiny gasket comes away here, but literally you can blow through that, you can pour, pour stuff through that, you can actually see daylight all the way through there, okay? Because um, it, it needs to breathe, the same as any, any other um, small engine, they need to breathe. So if you're gonna leave your, your machine out in the, win, in the winter, let me try and line that up so we can see a little tiny bit, you can see daylight just coming through one of those holes. I can see it from here, I don't know if you guys can see that. But I can see daylight through there, okay? So that's what happens, um, water gets in. So one of the biggest tricks you can do is put your lawnmower indoors um, or you know, out the way. Or what lots of people do, I've seen it before, um, and it's not a brilliant fix, is to get yourself uh, a little pack of these um, latex gloves. Brilliant for putting over fuel caps, tie it on like that, and on your air filter, that goes on there like so. Once that's all screwed down into place, and all looking nice, you can then get your, your, air, your, your, your latex gloves, give it a bit of a stretch, and then stretch the whole thing over the top. Of course, that screw won't be there because it's not complete. You want the whole, the whole uh, air filter cover itself. Like so, that all goes on together, right? You can then get your, your, your latex glove, give it a good stretch. Stretch it, baby, and then that go over the top. Okay, obviously mine's gonna split on me on, on live camera. Over the top, sit on there like that. We one over your fuel cap as well, and that will stop the majority of fuel, but you will still get some moisture in because um, because water is attracted to ethanol, okay? But that's just a little tip and trick that I, I tell other people to do when, uh, when they have problems with their lawnmower. So get some latex gloves, or clean film would do, a carrier bag, a plastic box, a Chinese, Chinese takeaway tub, 
great on top of it, up the other way. But ideally, get it out, get it out of the moisture, put it inside, get it, get rid of it. Okay. Right. So moving on. All the um, fuels come out of there. But I need to just put in a piece of rag. So I just want to soak up all the additional um, fuel that's inside this tank. So I'm just going to poke some blue roll in there. All the way in, all the way in, all the way in. A rag would be better, but I haven't got one to hand. Give it a good swirl round. Make sure you get all of it. And then gently, gently, gently remove the rag. Make sure all this stuff is out of there. Tip it up so you can see what's going on. Yeah, all the fuel's now out. That can now be um, put to one side. Moving on to the carburetor itself, there's still one more place to check on here before we can actually um, say this carburetor is clean, and that's to remove the five screws, remove the air, air intake elbow, take that off. There's five screws on here. Now there's, there's about 45 million videos on how to do these, okay? So you ain't got to watch mine, but there are 45 million thousand of them on, on YouTube. But for an old engine, these are still a very, very common engine and very, very easy to fix and the parts are still really, really readily available. So we're gonna move the five screws. Once they're loosened up and taken off, around it, you can then remove the carburetor from the tank. And I'll show you one more place where you're gonna have problems with these fuel tanks if the machine's left out all winter long. Take that off, take, move it out of the way for now, it's a carby. And just inside there, it's full of gunk, see it? Absolutely full of stuff. that will be full of water and full of dirt. Look at the dirt in there, look, look at it, absolutely riddle. So, quick little blowout with my um, air compressor, which my, my dog absolutely, absolutely hates. <laughs> quick air compress, and it's clean, it's done. But you can use carburetor spray, you can use WD-40, you, 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 you can put it in the sink and wash it up if you want to, just make sure your wife don't see you do it. Give it a damn good clean. Cleanliness is godliness when it comes to cleaning carburetors. You've got to be clean. If you're not clean, the machine will not run. And remember, this machine would not run for nothing, okay? I just could not get, get it to start um, because it's been sat outside all winter long. There's a few little tiny bits of dirt in there. I want to be keen to get out. A bit of carburetor spray, brake intake, spray whatever you've got. Just going to literally just going to run that into that hole just there. And one into there. And that's that bit done. How easy was that? Nice, quick, nice, simple. Leave it to one side now, so you don't get no more dirt in there at all. That is going to be inherent in there. Push that to one side. Next, we'll move on to the carburetor itself. Now, this is slightly different, okay? You've got five screws to remove without dropping any on the floor like I've just done there. Remove your five screws. One, two, three, four, and one on the floor is five. Come here, you, and I'm a fifth screw. Now underneath here, we've got a little tiny metal gauze. Just twist that and it should come off. They are a bit sticky at times, get a, bit, a good twist and eventually it will just come off in your hand, okay? So there's a little tiny gauze there. And you've got a little tiny gasket and diaphragm. Now please remember, when you put these on to, onto the tank, it will go diaphragm goes on first, gasket goes on top second. Gasket goes on second, diaphragm on first. Whichever way you want to say it, but your diaphragm must go on first. A uh, little tiny spring, just remove that. Off of there, okay, put it to one side. Don't lose these bits. Uh, the tube you can, you can leave on. Lots of people just take those off. I do find you do have priming problems possibly afterwards if you remove that big straw. I'll leave mine on. And inside here is a little tiny, 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 tiny little main jet, okay? That needs to come out ideally. Little tiny o-ring on the top, that's got to come off too. Very, very careful. So get yourself a really, really small uh, flat-headed screwdriver, and I mean tiddly. Okay, and just on this jet, there'll be a little tiny cutout just on the side. You see that? A little tiny cutout. Just jam your screwdriver in a little tiny bit, not hard, and just literally tease that up. There's an O-ring just behind it. Tease that up and pull your, your main jet out. If you don't pull that main jet out, there'll be dirt inside there, and that'll be where your carburetor is getting, getting all, all, all uh, where it's playing up. So that carburetor is now pretty much fully disassembled, okay? Now's a good time to clean the carburetor up fully. Now, I, I do suggest, not to use carburetor cleaner. And I do get hounded for that quite a lot, okay? But that's just my own preference. You use whatever you like. Um, a few holes to go in. Don't squirt straight into that hole just there, because if you do, that will shoot you straight in the face, okay? Because that hole there is connected to that hole over there. So don't do that. So cover it with your thumb, and then have a squirt up. See how it's coming out? Let's clean it. Clean it. Clean it. 
a good general clean all round. You've got a main jet in here, open the throttle up, go all the way through, all the way through, and there's a main jet just down inside there. Give that a clean. You've got a main jet here, give that a clean inside there. I've got WD-40 going right down my arm. One in there, give that a squeeze. Lovely jubbly. We've got a little tiny ball bearing just here. Make sure that ball bearing is in place. If it's not, you're in trouble. One here, sorry. So I'm just going through a general good clean. That's all I'm doing, okay? Nothing more, nothing less. I'm not doing anything anything amazing. Just giving anywhere where I see there's dirt, I'm cleaning it. I'm spraying it, I'm getting rid of it. All right. If there's a little tiny gram of dirt there, you wanna get rid of it. So plenty of cleaning. Let me finish that off. I'll come back to you in two seconds. Right, now onto the main jet itself. Um, there's a few holes down through here, okay? One hole down through the center, a little tiny hole jet all the way through the top there as well. And all you've got to do, Get your, get your spray, put it on top, run that through. See how it's going all the way through? It's clear. But I might just literally, by putting a bit of spray through there, might have just dislodged anything that was, uh, that was stopping the flow. Okay, so just a nice good clean. Lovely job, Lee. And then get your carburetor, which is now clean. My carb is nice and clean now, same carby. I haven't swapped it over for a new one. Put it in, and now you have to line it up, okay? There's a little tiny collar down inside the carby, inside here, a little tiny white collar all the way down in there. Now, if that isn't lined up properly, then your main jet won't go in, and mine doesn't go in, okay? So you just have to, just have to jiggle it about a bit, give it a tap, and eventually that collar will just slide. If not, just give it a little tiny bit of a push, and it will just slide down into place, where's mine? Mine is just off centre, so mine will just go down this way just a touch. That's mine there. So I'm just going to slide mine in now. And then get the back of the screw on. It's got, it's got to go click, like that, guys. If it doesn't go click, it's not in. All right, that's all done. Every time you see dirt, spray. Every single time. Cleanliness, godliness. Okay, every single time you see dirt, spray. That's that bit done. You can then get your, your, your metal filter, give it a clean as well with some carburetor spray or what have you. And that goes back onto a little tiny sleeve there and that stops it sucking up any dirt from inside the well on the tank, okay? Now the carburetor has been done, it's cleaned. I'm gonna get rid of all this mucky stuff, okay? Back and go in the bin. Get yourself a new bit of, new bit of roll or a new rag or you, your wife's favorite pillowcase, whatever it is you wanna use. Don't tell her I said that. Get a new bit of rag. Put that down on the bench, because now we're going to start to put the carburetor back together, but we want a nice clean surface to do so. In comes a tank, that's nice and clean. Uh, here's your, um, your diaphragm part you want, it's a 795083. Do not skimp, you will see these on eBay, on Amazon, get the genuine one. They're about five and a half quid, right? They're not a lot of money. You get a cheap Chinese one for about two quid, it's not worth the risk, okay? Get the genuines. Remember what I said about putting your, um, your gasket on first, or you saw your diaphragm on first. That's the main one you wanna put on. And then get your, your gasket to go on top of that, okay? Do not put it the other way around, it won't work. What's up you dog, you whinging? Right, now that your, um, your carb is all clean, it has to go straw into the hole, and then your filter, this one, goes into what we call the well, okay? That goes in, that goes in, and just gently seat it, okay? Now go and get your five screws, one of which I dropped on mine. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake there. I made a mistake, woo back, go back. I made a mistake, anyone spot it? Do not forget your little tiny spring. It sits just on there. That's why I have a magnet tray so I know what bits I've got left. That goes into there. All right, now seat it down. So now get your screws and just gently, just place them. Do not push them. Just place them. Because what we want to do is we want to get that gasket and diaphragm all lined up just right so that it will all go down. So do not force these down just yet. Once they find their home, they drop. That's dropped. That's dropped. Not dropped. That's dropped. That one's nearly there. Right, get your Phillips screwdriver and just literally wind these down just to a kiss. Just to a kiss. No more, no less. I'm not screwing these down. Just literally just 
kissing them down to a carburetor because if you screw them down unevenly, then these carburetors over time, because they're plastic, they do warp, okay? And if they warp, then you have to do a few more tricks and pieces to get around it, like putting two gaskets on or replacing the carburetor. And these are about 22 pound for a new genuine carburetor now. Again, do not buy copies because they don't work. I've tried, they don't work. They're going down, yeah. Right. Once they've all gone down and we're, and we're happy that they're all just sort of just kissed, then just go back round and just quarter of a turn on each one at opposite angles. Don't do it together to opposite angles and it brings the carburetor down fully, okay? Once that's done, you can get a bit of fuel, not a lot, just a bit. A bit of fresh fuel, put that into the tank. Because we now want to test for leaks. So a bit of fuel, there must be enough fuel here to prime, okay? Get a bit, of, a bit of blue roll, get my fuel cap on as well. Like so, so I'll get a bit of fresh blue roll and I'll soak up any spare fuel that there is around this tank. Okay guys and girls? And just let that evaporate off. Because what happens on these old carbies is that they tend to leak right out the front, just there. That's where they leak, just in between there. Okay, they do it every time. Just as a carburetor gets old, it gets hot, it's right on the intake, and they warp, okay? Now what you can do, you can screw them down a bit more to try and make it level. Um, or um, you can um, double gasket, put two gaskets on, or you buy a new carburetor. You can try and level it out, but not, not to great success. Get a bit of clean roll, okay? Open the throttle flap up, bit of clean roll, and snap that off, and force that into the hole. Force that in. Okay, now, clean that bit off there, get it nice and dry. And now you're on a prime on the front of a carb, and you're looking right down the level of here, so you're, and you'll see fuel come out, you'll see it. If it's gonna leak, I'm getting nothing. That means I've got a good seal on my carburetor. I can just see it trying to pulse, just trying to pulse. I'm just going to just give that a nick, not a lot. Give it another wipe. Don't forget, this is trying to fill up with fuel here, see, so it'd be a bit, a bit quick. If need, put a new bit, a new bit of rag in there if need be. Let's give that another prime. I'm looking down the side of it. No, that's good. No, we're happy. Right, so that's not, see how it's filling up with fuel here, see? It's not leaking here though, that's good. So that can come out now. So that carburetor is now not only cleaned, but it's no longer leaking, it's not sucking any air in, it's not doing anything it shouldn't do. So now I'm gonna be fitted back to the lawnmower, but before we fit it back to the lawnmower, I recommend giving that one good clean off, put a bit of tissue in here, a bit of tissue in there, um, just so you, a bit of tissue in there, just so you, oh, not in there, so that's a bolt off, in there and in there, just so you don't get no, no crud in there. Good clean off and I'll come back to you to fit the carburetor. Right, a um, bit of a clean up. Um, I put tissue in the holes there, as I said before, it just stops anything going um, into this system. Just one thing to note, when you put these um, carbies onto these um, engines, it's a little tiny clip here and an O-ring just inside this carb. That must be on the tank. It goes on rubber ring first, then the clip, and there's a little tiny cutout just there which allows you to uh, remove that and replace it, okay? Sometimes you find them on the intake just over here, and if they are, put them onto here. Rubber ring first, and then the um, clamp. So, to put this on, it's a bit of a fiddly poker. You've got, you've got to twist, that, twist this up this way to get the governor arm on. It is a bit of a fiddle, and a bit of bendage might be needed, but once you've got it on, they're not too bad. As he says, try and show you guys on my camera. Get on it. Don't roll. Can't even see the hole. There it is. Oh, nearly. On. That's it, that's on. Put it back where it belongs. Okay. And then we've got a little tiny um, spring here also, haven't we? Let's put a little bit of petrol there. Let's turn that petrol off that lawnmower deck. Little tiny spring here. Hello, spring. And that spring's got to go onto the other side. Well, I compressed it with air to try and get it clean. It didn't like it. Right, there you go. Right, Mr. Spring, there he is. 
and that spring has got to go onto the other side of the hole just like so let me show you the orientation of that just so otherwise people say oh you didn't show me where the bits go mick goes like that see it that's how it goes spring on there and, and governor arm okay all right put it onto there get that fitted and then slide up onto the air in, onto the intake that will just go like so it will go like that rhyme it is make sure this bit here is all is all not caught up guys because if it gets caught up it won't rev right on like that once it's in place just double check it, it does actually move okay this bit here is tricky with these governors because they, they do like to stick get your half inch bolt that goes in get your 3 8 bolt that goes in and then just nick those two up where is my impact baby here it is what right. impact on i want to set them in set number one one there uh three eighths bolt that's quite an in-depth video guys because you know th th there is quite a bit to it and some of you guys might say oh i'm not bothering with that old muck i'll just give it to someone we go and pay the money but this can be done with a half inch a three eighths and uh, a few extra little you know little screwdrivers bits and pieces stuff you can probably buy for about 15 quid down at down the old pound shop or whatever it's called you know what i mean bnq just want to nick that half inch half inch one up as a touch because it's got to be on there quite tight um little tiny elbow to go on here just sit that on, on the carburetor and on there first things first get a little bit of a clean there's dirt in there first thing you don't want to be doing is in is introducing dirt into your nice clean carburetor you just spent 25 minutes cleaning <laughs> Get that quick clean, sit that on, bend it round, put it all on together, and go on in a minute. It's supposed, supposed to be put on first, I know what you're saying. For those of you who know what you're doing, yeah, I know. Put it on before you put a tank on, Mick, I know. But you can do it. It goes on. Right, that goes on there like so. That's all on. Little tiny O ring to go on. Like so. See how being gentle, we're not getting dirt in a car, B. See that? That goes on to there, get on. Now, I'm going to put this throttle back on, or do I leave it off, Mick? I might just leave it off, guys. I might just take mine off. You don't have to. You can put yours back on, right? It's just, it's, just, it's, it's a thing. You can govern it just by here, but just by having it here, you can govern all this sort of stuff. So I'm going to leave, I'm just going to leave mine off. I think, oh, do you know what? I'll put it back on. It's done. If, I, if someone says to me, Mick, you should, should have done this, should have done that, I didn't do it, then that's just me, isn't it? Yeah. goes behind there, and if you're lucky enough, you should still be able to see where the old one used to go it used to go just here see guys there's not tiny hole there's a tiny mark on the on the older uh, cable and that used to live in there like that it goes that way and then you can then set your cable to where it wants to be which is about there get your flathead driver start that off rocking All the way through the process of this, if ever you're not sure, take photographs before you take stuff apart, right? That is one of the golden rules. I want a cable tie now. Hunt the cable tie. Hunt the cable tie, mix my workshop. I found one. Look at that, look. How sorted them out of I this year? Uh, I don't like these. It's just not my thing. I'm going to put that on there. It just holds it quite close to the uh, to the carby. Just keeps it all tidy out of the way. That's all it does. It doesn't do any, anything else but that. If we cut that off. Like so. Twist that round so no one catches their fingers on it. That's it. Now, um, as I say, new air filter is required. If not, just clean your old one in um, in petrol. So I'll just show you very quickly. Not, not that I will. I should probably get a new, a new air filter for this one. So a bit of fuel there. I'm going to put some latex gloves on. Now all you have to do is get some latex gloves. All right, guys. And then, literally, bring you guys down so you can see what I'm talking about. Might be easier, Mick. There you go. Get your air filter. All right. I'm going to put some clean fuel in there. That had water in there, didn't it, from earlier on, remember? So clean that out. Nice clean surfaces. Air filters are about two and a half quid, right? But if, you're, if, you want, if you don't want to wait for one, you know, whilst you're repairing your lawnmower, you know, you, can't, you haven't got a shop. Over in the UK, you can't just buy these filters off the, off the, off the shelf. It doesn't work like that in the UK. Not like in America. You can't just buy these off the shelf. I don't know many places that actually just sell them bang like, like you know, a DIY shop. We don't sell them. So get the petrol. 
right? Now give that a darn good squeeze. Look at all that oil coming out of there. What lovely oil, right? Look how dirty that is. And now give it a tiny bit of a, bit of a massage. Massage all that grass out. Okay, this is temporary, guys. This is temporary. This isn't permanent. All right, give it a tiny massage. Work the thumbs into it, right? Treat it like a lady. All right, a little tiny massage. And a squeeze. Look how much cleaner that is, okay? Now you allow that, you allow that to dry. Put it, into a, put it into a cloth. Give it an extra squeeze and it'll soak up all, the, all that old petrol. Look, that's all oil. That's oil. Because someone would have tipped this lawnmower up in its life. If you're going to tip these lawnmowers up on, on their size, do it with the carburetor up highest. Don't do it with the carburetor down lowest. Tip it over onto its, onto its, its exhaust. But if need be, tip it onto its back. That's the best way. Right. Now it's done. That cloth's quite wet now. Look, look how clean, how refreshed that looks. I know it's not perfect, but that will get you out, out the poop. Hang it up to dry for 20 minutes, let the petrol completely evaporate from it, and you'll be good to go. It doesn't hurt in the slightest. Clean up your air filter box, get it all nice and clean as well, and I'll come back to you once I've done all that. Right, so now we should be ready for a fire up. Bear in mind, this machine's not been started all winter. Been left outside all winter. Um, so let's put a clamp on, hold that back, throttle on, give it a couple of pumps, and give it a pull. Let's see what happens. work too. And it shuts off. Lovely job. So there you go. So if your lawnmower has been left outside all winter and um, it's had water get into all the elements, that would be the quickest way I would say to fix your machine. And that's probably taken me around about 45 minutes to show you guys, but it would take me normally around about 15 minutes to do it on my own. We've just got, got down and dirty, got, got it done. So a few little tools probably cost you around about with a gasket, the air filter of a spark plug, 15 quid. Um, the tools you might have to buy if that have them already, another 15, 20 quid. You might be able to get your lawnmower up and running for around about 30 pounds, something like that. So don't be frightened, have a go at it yourself. There's loads of videos online, lots of fantastic small engine channels like, like myself and other people. Go and check them out and uh, go and see how to repair your own equipment. Save yourself a few quid, especially in these current um, times, in the uh, cost of living crisis, they call it. Go and do that, do it yourself. Become, become independent and learn how to do it, do it yourself. And that way, you know, you're self-sufficient. You don't have to rely on other people to repair your equipment for it. You can do it yourself. And once you start doing lawnmowers, you can move on to two strokes, but they are a whole different cookie. If this is the first time you watch a Mixed Mother Mother Man, hit your subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I'm up on the video. I look forward to seeing the episode of Mixed Mother very, very soon. But until guys and girls, much more importantly, take care easy.